Welcome, this is Mr. Solomon with another edition of Minecraft EDU for Schools here at Village East Elementary. Today we are working on the 2015 edition of Colonies with 5th graders. So we talk about our technology standards every time, how they're going to be creative and innovative, communicate, collaborate, and be digital citizens, and this is really their task. Imagine you're a colonist who's just arrived in a new world. What would you need to do in order to survive? Students had some front-loading done in the classroom by researching the three colonies of the 1700s. The New England colonies, the Middle colonies, and the Southern colonies. Then after spending two days researching and finding out what colonies had in common and what buildings were there, they then came to the computer lab and I helped them create this simulation of what it would be like. So we have craftsmen, builders, and farmers. Each person has a specific job that they're responsible for doing. So we go over these ahead of time on the first day. I usually turn off animals until the last day because I've seen that students tend to just focus on animals when they're around and they forget about everything else. We always go through our rules of Minecraft. Students don't change any settings. Their title now is Builder, Farmer, or Craftsman, so we can see what they are supposed to be doing, as well as their number. We talk about no griefing, number five. We talk about what 21st century skills they'll be using. And then we looked at a couple of snapshots of colonies. So I got these from the internet, doing some searching on Google about what early colonies look like, how they constructed their homes, and how they were laid out. So when the students came to the lab, they already had some background on how that is going to go. So this is the world that I created for this year. Students spawn in to an island, and there are border blocks around. So they just walk up to their section. They've been split into groups, working in about groups of uh, six to nine students per group, depending on the size of the class. And so this is where they begin. So each group will go to their colony section. So let's start with the southern colonies. If they right click, you'll see the eyeball is the only thing that's visible to students. And so then they can teleport themselves onto, it's an island, even though that's not accurate. But this keeps students staying in their area. And it also helps students see how to use the land. I'm going to open up the teacher menu so I can increase my speed. I always like turning on build tools so I can build from far away. And so once students go on this island, there's no way to get back. The only way they can get back is if they spawn back to the beginning, and I have turned that off. And so they're in survival mode right now. So students have to make their own food. They have to share their food with others. So you can see this is the finished product. So students had a lot of time to make food and tools for each other. They put up their own signs, which is nice to see. So this is where animals are going to be. Here's their house, so we'll take a look in their house. So what I did with students is we spent three days in survival mode, creating all of the uh, food that they need, tools from scratch, chopping down trees, and then on the fourth day, I told students they would have 15 minutes in creative mode, which gives them all the inventory to get as much building done as they can. Students put a beacon here so they can see where to meet from far away. That was built out of grass. And we talked about when you're in creative mode to only use the materials that existed in the 1700s. So you'll notice that all the houses have lanterns and no electricity. And so if we look inside their house, you can see they've decorated it really nicely. That's very authentic to the times. They have lanterns. Not sure about that typewriter. But they've got some food that they're growing just outside. So that's where they can sustain themselves. They've built paths. Some aren't quite done yet. This looks like it's going to be either the church or the town hall. Let's see what this building is over here. So this is the school. So if we look inside the schoolhouse, not quite finished yet. So some students were in different stages of completion as others. I can see how I set up the borders around here. So I put border blocks around each island. So students can't leave once they're there. This was created with World Painter, which I'm still new at. So I was learning how to create different islands with different resources, a mixture of trees. And then I went in and put these border blocks in so students can't escape and try to venture off where they're supposed to be. I also put some uh, NPC characters that will trade with students. 
So there's some bone meal available to them if they can give them a craft table. And there's another uh, character that will trade food. So if you give them a fence, he'll give you a carrot. If you give him a wood pickaxe, he will give you a diamond pickaxe. So I haven't found where they're hiding yet. Some students block them in so they can find them easily. But this is an overview. If I go to the map here, you can see how this island is set up. So that is the southern colonies. I'm going to go back to the spawn point and now we'll take a look at the middle colonies. We'll save New England for last. That's southern where we just went. Middle colonies. So these are done with teleport stations and these are buried under the ground and then students can't leave once they're there. So here's where the middle colony spawns in. Looks like they have a farm started with some crops growing. Tiny house, torches. See if they have some more signs labeled. They started to put in a path, which was nice to see. So most of this was done when they had that short time in creative mode to really take their structures and houses and improve upon them. So if we look inside this house here, Lanterns, furnace, that's looking good, that's authentic. Not sure what this house is. Let's take a look inside. Right now there's only a bed. Uh, I'm going to fly over and go to the border here. And you can see what the border of middle colonies looks like. Some students decided to grow their crops around here. I don't quite see it on this example. That might be the New England colonies that did that. So what I can see, if I was going to extend this activity, that if they wanted to build a trade route to different colonies, then I could take out those border blocks and then start connecting these three islands with land, which was looking a lot more like it would if it was really in the colonial times. So I see they have some crops growing, but not a lot. A lot of times students were just learning how to share resources and work together. Sometimes students splinter in their group. So we've had a group of seven. I had four students going off and working together on building. And then three students would just sort of go on there and do their own thing and start mining underground. And we would talk about whether that was really something that was done in the 16 and 1700s. Okay, we're back to the spawn point, and you'll see now it is nighttime. So I have turned that on. That's something you can do in version 1.7, is control day and night. Pressing M on the teacher menu, clicking on the world setting, and here you can see it's now 3 o'clock in the morning. So I can adjust the time to morning, so it'll go by faster. Uh, students can then learn that the importance of crafting torches and sources of light. So I can turn those on and off. Here's where I can turn on animals or not. This is student build. These are all the teacher menus. So assignments. Here's all the teleport stations. This is my teacher tools for building and clearing. And then this one is for computer craft. So let's check out the New England colonies. That's the middle. If I right click. We'll teleport ourselves to the New England colonies and see how theirs is shaping up. So they have a very tall structure. It doesn't look like they have the slanted roofs that we had discussed. This group had a hard time working together throughout this project. We had to talk to them several times about sharing and working together. And you can kind of see the level of progress compared to the other two groups. So this house has a nice structure chest with nothing in it because we talked about putting your materials in a chest. I'm looking for a doorway. Here we go. So this looks like the church. Nice. They have a clock in there. These are from a Bibliocraft. That's a mod that lets you decorate the interiors of buildings. So they're using some of those authentic uh, pieces in any inventory. This one doesn't have a sign because we said they should label each of their buildings with signs. 
is a very large structure. So there's a bookshelf, clock, some random items put down. So you can kind of tell which groups really work together in getting this project done as a true colonist and which groups struggled. So it's interesting that they placed their farm around the water without a fence because Minecraft is authentic. So if you planted seeds just in grass and didn't water them, they will not grow. So students at least understood the idea that you need to plant near water. So the last thing I'll do is go to my teacher menu and this time I will turn on animals and you can see the difference. So now if I spawn to the southern colonies we should see some animals roaming around. At least I hope so. It's a well labeled farm. They have torches so it will light up at night. They have signs to tell people to not walk on the crops which is nice. doesn't look like there's any animals in there yet but what I could do as a teacher as well just to show you if I'm in build mode I can open up my inventory I can search for pigs I don't want a zombie pig and I can search for sheep and I will put in a cow just to show you how this is done and then if I right click with each of these, there's one pig, there's one sheep, and there's one cow. So if they put their animals in a pen, I can help spawn them in. The issue, once again, is students only want to worry about the animals once they're present. Either making swords and killing them, or if they're horses and riding on them. So it tends to be a little chaotic, and I've just learned that from experience. So. They have a nice farm right outside and you can see they put some water down. Let's spawn back to the beginning and take a look at a different colony. So if we go to middle, we'll take a look at this group. If it's nighttime and I don't want it to be, easy to switch. I can lock it too, so now it will always be 8.30, you'll notice. So you have a lot of great tools as a teacher in Minecraft EDU to control what you want students to be able to do. So I'm cruising around still looking for my NPC character. There he is. So there is our native villager. So I put two of these hidden in each section. And so when you right click, this is how they'll trade. So if you have a craft table, you can then take three carrots. If you have a wooden pickaxe, you can then take a diamond pickaxe. It will help you. And so you'll see that he has some dialogue that he says too. He says, would you like to trade with me? And there's another NPC that does the same thing that will give them uh, bone meal to help their crops grow. So I tried to give them some opportunities to do some hunting around for Native Americans that they could trade with, which is authentic to the times. I hope you enjoyed this project. Thanks for watching.